When we picked this deer up, a lot of the people in the neighborhood weren't very happy about us picking it up. Mm -hmm. But it was because of the concern for children and uh, people that we picked the thing up. And you can see, he's not much of a pet, really. No, he isn't. Not every white-tailed buck is like Bambi. Like any wild creature, even a gentle species has cantankerous individuals. This small buck was originally a semi-tame buck fawn that the DNR confiscated in a rural area because it was chasing kids at a school bus stop. With this attitude, what kind of personality did this buck develop? Here he is with his antlers removed because of the danger he presented to DNR employees at the Rose Lake Wildlife Research Station. Normally, when a buck's antlers are removed prematurely, the buck will have a complete personality change. Usually he'll become quiet and even sullen. His feeling of power and status are gone. But not this bruiser. If anything, his antler loss seemed to spur him on for a battle. It's possible for hunters to encounter bucks like this in the field. And with three quarters of a million hunters in Michigan's woods and waters in November, it happens. George Gowan from Linwood was hunting with his son Randy on the last evening of deer season, November 30th, in the last half hour, when the two of them had a trophy buck down. George ran through the brush and came upon this 12-pointer at point-blank range. The deer turned on me. And when the deer, I, I seen the deer, he was probably 10, 15 feet away. And the deer turned on me. When he and turned, he was standing? Uh, he was down, but he, I, I seen him get up. And then uh -huh. he turned on me. And when he turned, I caught the horns with my hand. And then he caught me in the leg here. And I flipped through the air. Oh, he actually He come up, up got me. And then I knocked him down. And then we're both laying on the ground looking at one another. <laughs> and uh, I says, you know, I, I knew he was hurt. But I said, you know, how bad is he? And uh, we're looking one another in the eye. And uh, the deer, he, he got up, put his head down, and come at me again. Well, where was your gun? In my hands. You don't think oh. I'm going to let go of that, Fred. <laughs> so you went through all this with your gun in your hand? Yeah, I went through the air with it. And oh. uh, I'm laying on the ground, and the deer, the deer when he, 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 he went to come at me again, I shot him. George and Randy had no idea they'd bag a trophy buck just minutes before the end of the season, nor did George think he'd have a close brush with death at the wrong end of a buck's antlers. But that deer was a trophy at 12 point with a 17 inch spread qualifying for an award. It's funny, some people think a symmetrical rack is the most beautiful trophy, while others feel that unusually large or deformed or misshapen antlers are the best prize. And so are other deformities, such as a deer with unusual coloration. Hunter Chris Stannard from Pinckney took an unusual buck in the 1987 season and taxidermist Brad Bruce from Tecumseh, the president of the Michigan Taxidermist Association, preserved this unusual animal in a full mount. We've had abnormal antlers, many of them on the air, but never an entire abnormal deer. Chris, this is, this is something else, a complete albino. I have never seen a complete toe-to-tail, to nose albino. Have you, Brad? No, it's uh, definitely true, uh, true albino, Fred. Well, you can tell by the pink eyes. These are special order when you had to mount them. Yes, uh-huh. But it had pink eyes, pink nose, the hooves are mm -hmm. white. Must have been, you must have thought you had a goat walking through, Chris. I, uh, I was a little bit excited when this thing came out of mm -hmm. the woods. I saw him uh, about, that was up in a tree bow hunting. Saw him about 70 yards out, came out in the field and went back in and I, I knew right then that I wouldn't tell my buddies that I saw this because uh, Nobody would believe this one. Mm -hmm. uh, got lucky and he came right under my tree stand and put an arrow in him. You know, a lot of people regard a deer that's albino or unique like that uh, similar to a deer with a big rack, you know, as a trophy of some sort. I certainly second that. I but it, it's, a, it's a trophy that, that has a lot of misunderstanding about it. You know, I mean, in this state even, a uh, bill is going to be introduced to make it illegal to shoot an albino deer. But I think the people who 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 feel that way don't realize that these deer aren't really special. There's there's a lot wrong with albinos. Did you find anything wrong with it? Of course, behind the ears here, what's, what's the deal? Yeah, it had a problem with some ear mites mm -hmm. behind the ears. But uh, other than that, uh, it was completely normal and uh, the venison was delicious. Is that right? Yes. Because a lot of times a deer that has this abnormality of albinism like this has other things wrong internally and they normally don't live very long. Any idea how old this one was? 
Uh, estimates one and a half to two years. Yeah, a young one. Mm -hmm. So it did have a nice, nice rack for a deer that age. So you ate the venison. Yeah, it was great. great. Just like every other? Just like the, this was the second one I got with a bow, and uh, was just like the first one. Delicious. I'll be darned. You know, some people, uh, we're going to have this up at the museum. Yep. Because, Chris, you're going to let us keep this up at the museum here and have it on display. And the reaction when people see a deer like this is, oh, that's a little teeny one. Brad, is this a teeny deer? No, no not really. I mean, you said it's, it dressed uh, out to what? 125. 125 mm -hmm. pounds. That's a an average size. It had a, a year and a half old buck. Normal dimensions in it, as far as taxidermy is concerned. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and really, the rack uh, isn't too shabby either. No, so, it isn't. Know. <laughs> I mean, this is a an amazingly well conformed buck of average size and weight, but highly unusual because it's a full albino, a rarity in nature that generally has many physiological problems and usually has a short lifespan. This mount by Brad Bruce is being loaned to our Hunting and Fishing Museum in Houghton Lake by Chris Stannard and will be on display during the coming year with other albino wildlife oddities. Back to our big buck stories from 1988, Fred, with Jim Allen from Ionia. He's a dairy farmer who just started bow hunting this year and bagged a 13-pointer from a ground blind. You nervous when this buck I came I didn't out? have time to get nervous. Uh, I was standing on a fence row and it was real thick and I just found a spot on there where I could see through and I stood in that. I had seen a buck when I got the six point go down this fence row that morning and the wind was right for me to get over there so I went over there this particular morning and there happened to be a water hole down from me about probably 50 yards and I heard it crash into that water and I drew my bow and I seen two does, they come through the opening, I followed them through, and then I heard a crash in the water again, and I thought, well, maybe there'd be a buck coming, and I could see horns coming through the brush, and when he got in the open, I just followed him along. Where it felt comfortable, I let him maybe six inches and I'll be darned. let it go. I could just see it come, the deer and the arrow actually come together. Ooh, <laughs> an exciting morning for you. You gonna bow hunt next year? I think so. <laughs> yeah, oh, I guess with your track record. Congratulations. Thank you. Jim Allen's buck dressed out at nearly 200 pounds, a great way to break into bow hunting. Now, the most abnormal, non typical rack we've seen so far this year is this 16 pointer with a 21 and a half inch spread taken by Roger Wicker from Hazlitt. And he was so calm about it all. Not much of one, really. I was hunting out of my father in law's farm. And I've been hunting there for about 10 years, and a doe came in, we were lucky enough to have doe permits, and I shot her, and she fell down, it was still early. So I stood right there and waited, and about 10 minutes later, I heard a grunt, came in, and he walked in, I shot him, and grazed him underneath the belly, and he took two steps and started walking right at me. And that was it? And, yeah. No more monkey business there. Well, this is... Did this rack strike you as being rather humongous when you first looked at it? To be honest with you, I hunt with my father-in-law all the time, so when I shot it, I didn't even go over and look at it. I went out and got him, and we were out there, and I said, what are you doing? He says, not much. He said, you get one. I said, I got two. And I said, you, you know, mean we you, went back. You really weren't looking at the antlers when this no, boy came he in? he was more excited than I was, because... <laughs> We, we were all pretty excited to see this rack, highly unusual with the palmation, almost like a moose. An extremely interesting set of antlers for Roger Wicker. Now let's take a look at the widest racks of 1988 that have been reported to us so far. This one stretches 25 and a half inches at its widest. The beams carried 11 points for Mike Lamorant from Ann Arbor. Well, it was the third morning and I got him at 7.25 a.m. in the morning. And I just had left my car about 10 minutes earlier and I was going to go down to get between a cornfield and a thicket and the wind was blowing wrong so I had to come around the other side of the cornfield and as I was walking on the edge of the cornfield he was bedded down about 15 rows in and he jumped up and I heard the corn crash and I turned around and he was coming back down off his first leap and all I could see was horns mm. and when he came up for his second leap he traveled about five yards with his head down in the corner when he came back up in the air he had about five corn stalks hanging off his antlers oh boy <laughs> he couldn't he couldn't make it through the corn row and when he came back up for the second leap I shot and got him Wow you must have been shaking and trembling to walk upon Antlers this size. I really wasn't sure how big he was at first because he had all the corn wrapped in his antlers and mm -hmm. after I made sure he was 
he was dead. Then I started taking the corn out, and then I couldn't believe it. Oh, man. What'd you do after that, after you got him tagged? And I can't say that on television. <laughs> can't you? <laughs> <laughs> I went back to Everybody's the... Everybody's mind is going, what did you do? <laughs> I went back to the, the farmer's, whose property I was hunting on, and got him, and we came out with his truck and, and put him in the truck and took him back to the farm. Oh, he must, he must have had Many years, Mike Lamoran's might have been the widest rack we'd see, but this year, there's one a quarter of an inch wider taken by 17-year-old Jamie Collard from Carleton. Jamie's was 25 and three-quarter inches across and also had 11 points, but he almost smashed it to smithereens. What's the scoop on this removable antler? Well, I was uh, walking on the field, and I thought I seen a deer out there. So I stalked it, got a little closer, and my first, this is my first shot. And then, you, uh, Your first shot hit where? Right in the antler. In the antler? And then he took off running, and then I shot him twice. Have you done much missing in your lifetime? Oh, yeah. Have you? I got two bucks opening day last year. Oh, that's good. How big? Six and eight pointer. But of course, nothing. You ever seen anything to rival this down in your corner of the no. state? Oh, that's a dandy, dandy rack. You gonna have it mounted? Oh, yeah. Have it all glued back together? Yeah, he, he said he'd uh, patch it up so he won't even be able to tell. Everybody's going to remember. <laughs> We're all going to remember and remind you of it. Well, congratulations, Jamie. Thank you. you did a great job. Great story. A close call that almost destroyed the antlers, but Jamie Collard was lucky. Now for the widest rack we've seen in 1988. This buck also had 11 points, but it had a remarkable spread of 26 and 7 eighths inches. The hunter was 16-year-old Lauren Selby from Tecancha, who has quite a story to tell. 16 years old. Yep. How many people have said, you have nowhere to go in deer hunting but down? <laughs> I mean, look at this rack, the size of this. Have you seen anything or had a chance to get anything close to this size before? I've seen them. Have you really? This year. Other ones? So you know there's more out there you could get next year. Mm -hmm. That's something else. What, what's it take to shoot a big buck like this? I guess you have to be out there at the right time, right, right place. Right place at the right time. Describe the right place and the right time. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to tell me the crossroads or anything like that, but do you hunt the cornfields, the edges, back in the woods? A mm, little bit of both, really. Were you walking or in a blind? I was setting. Setting, okay. This was the third day of the season. Yep. Puts it about on Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yep, nine o'clock. She's supposed to be in school? <laughs> nope, I missed that day. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, well, we won't get into that story. Well, what was the story behind this one? Well, it was, I heard him coming behind me, and then I didn't hear him for a little while. And it must have been 20 minutes, and he laid down, or then something, then I heard something sort of step, stepping towards me. And I looked to my left, and there he was, all by himself, about 40 yards away. What, what did you hear when you say you heard him? Well, Steps he was, or? I heard, I heard something walking towards me. You know, I thought it was a squirrel at first, cause then it just stopped and I looked and I didn't see anything. And then I figured it must have just been a squirrel that climbed up a tree. And about 20 minutes later, I heard the same thing. It sounded like it was right beside me. So I turned and there it was. What, did he see you? No. Which way was the wind blowing? Oh, south southwest. But I mean, towards you? You were facing that direction, right? And he came up behind you? Yeah, I couldn't believe it, because he was coming through this way. He couldn't. I don't know how he didn't smell me. I was blowing right towards him. So how did you swing around on him? No problem? Well, I had two trees to my back, one mm -hmm. sitting here and another one sitting here, and I had a gap right between so I could oh. look through the corner. And so, I seen him coming, so I, you know, I always carry my gun about right here. And when he stepped out, when I could get a clear shot, there I let her fly. Whoa. <laughs> that must have been some excitement. Yeah. So everybody at school the next day, including the principal, knew where you were. Oh yeah. So there went that there went that excuse to being sick on they Thursday, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Well that's a great story. Well congratulations, yeah, Lauren. Way to go. Man, what a run. It's great to see youngsters and first timers take deer. But don't think that taking a buck is that easy. Less than half of all deer hunters bag a deer in an average season. But we love to look at these big bucks, whether it's in the woods or on the wall. White-tailed deer are beautiful animals. 
They provide hunters with lots of meat and a lot of enjoyment and a lot of big buck stories. We'll be back with more after we take a brief pause to talk with you about how you can help keep hunting and fishing on Primetime TV. 